Hello. So this video again is sponsored by Autodesk and I'm going to carry on with the going back to basics stuff. And um, what I'm going to do is show uh, stuff about vectors and um, you know vectors are basically um, if I select one point okay select if I just you know say that point there well, I don't need to select it but um, what happens is that point is a certain value from the origin um, I don't know how you can see that value I don't know if you can software master will just sort of show you what that value is but anyway it's got an XYZ value um, that a sort of set of instructions almost like go here it would be sort of minus five on the X it would be you know two not two but like 1.8 on the Y and you know minus 0.5 on the Z and that would what that's the vector that would describe that point's position because that's where it is in these three axes and um, all of these points have vectors which describe their point position and a vector can be visualized as a yeah as an arrow as a sort of um, as a line that's sort of diagonal but well, doesn't have to be diagonal but you know a line um, which you know describes those instructions which made that go there it's three values x y and z so if I bring this um, cube into if I make a bifrost graph and and just bring that cube in I can visualize those vectors so draw points no no draw vector now this compound doesn't exist normally in in by frost I sort of hacked together there one just to make make this um, vector thing in fact let me show um, there one because it might actually make more sense create arrow strands now this is a if you draw if you, this will draw strands from start and end position of something so if I get the point position get point position and I plug that into the end position and plug the strands in there now inside this object if I look inside there should be but there's not <laughs> maybe I need to create a value here um, okay what happens if I do 10 is it going to draw me 10 arrows no array size 300 30 300 yeah okay so that's now drawing 300 of the points in this object there are obviously a lot more than that so let's do a thousand I'm not really familiar with this node that's why I'm getting a little bit confused yeah okay that draws all of the vectors so in fact let's go back to one again because what's happening for one is happening for all of them that is the vector which describes that first point there it's going from the origin to there now I've made a um, compound which is more like the way that ice draws it and it's called draw vector and the difference is with mine is it draws it from the actual point itself so if I go if I put point position vector in mesh strands I'll just get rid of that one Effectively, that's the same thing. It's just drawn from the actual position of the point. So it's drawing it outwards. You know, the starting point isn't the origin. The starting point is the actual point itself. It's important to know that these vectors are, yeah, it's a set of instructions. So it almost doesn't matter where you draw them from. 
Uh, if you trace this line back, or any of these lines back, that end up with exactly the same direction and the same length that that line is, it would end up at the origin. Um, I think this is a more useful way of drawing it, personally, but it's, you know, it's just, um, anyway, that's a visualization tool. Um, we don't need that plugged in at the moment, so let's unplug that. Um, so we're getting the point positions of the object, and then we want to set the point positions. So set point position. Uh, plug that in there, and we want to set it on that mesh, and that's going to create a BIF object, which I'll just move over to the right. So those vectors. So right, going down this green pipe is a list. Imagine a piece of paper. <clears throat> Imagine a piece of paper with 300 values on it and you've rolled it up into a into a cylinder and you've stuck it down a pipe. That's effectively what's going on there. It's just 300 values, uh, not 300, well, how many is on this? 1,000, whatever points are on this. Um, and that's what is going down that pipe. And they're all, oops, sorry, they're all vectors. And what I'm going to do in this exercise is to use this thing called rotate vector because that's another useful tool. So it's called rotate uh, by quaternion and quaternion is a sort of type of rotation. I can't explain it very well because I don't really know. <laughs> I like a lot of stuff of this stuff. I don't really know mathematically what it does and I can't explain it very well but I do know that it what it does if you see what I mean and it will rotate something. Now by default these values are zero and I don't know why, but it makes the mesh disappear. A quaternion isn't a very useful thing. I don't know what those things mean. Um, and I'm not going to start fiddling with it. What I use is a thing called axis and angle to quaternion, usually. I'm doing this sort of stuff because it's a lot more obvious what's going on. The axis is just like taking any any vector as a as a you know as if it was like an axle and then the wheel is going to spin around the axle so for example if i did it on the what's the one we're looking at so the z which is this this sort of plane here if i did it the z axis so x y z and did that at one wouldn't make any difference if i put 10 it's just a sort of you know if i'm just doing it like zero zero so something it's going to dictate that axis. You could do it diagonally by doing sort of one zero one or something like that but you know <clears throat> or use any other vector to rotate around. And then we've got this thing called radians and they're kind of like degrees but I don't really understand radians so what I normally do is um, I say normally you didn't I mean they didn't have radians in ice but in here I'd change degrees to, to radians so degrees to radians because I know what degrees are and if I put this at 90, so that's the degrees input over here, then you'll see the thing spins 90 degrees. And that's because all of those little arrows going from the origin have all rotated around by 90 degrees. And that's how we've ended up with that there. So if I change this axis to the Y axis instead of the Z, you'll see that, okay, that's not very clear, is it? Because it's, it has rotated 90 degrees on the y-axis, so it looks exactly the same. If I change it 45 degrees, it's obviously going to be a lot more clear. Yeah. And while we're here, let's change this degrees to an animated value. So we're going to plug that into the input of the scene. That makes it appear here in this degrees thing, and now it's keyable. So let's go to frame zero, key that and go to the end frame and do it at three, 360 and key that. Now if we play the timeline you'll see it rotating. Cool. Okay, so they're all rotating around the, you know, all their vectors are now rotating around this um, axis which is the y-axis and they're rotating by the amount of degrees which are being converted to radians and these degrees are there in the input so they appear up here and we're animating that value and that's what's making that happen. So another thing we could do is make it so that they um, 
Now this thing here is for you for its you know its height is four. So basically the bottom points of this, the ones at the very base of this on the y-axis are at minus two in the scene, and the top ones are at plus two. So what we could do is make it so that at the bottom they're not doing any rotation and at the top they're at 360 degrees, which, are, which would effectively make it look like a twist throughout. So let's try and do that. Okay, so to do that, first of all, we need to measure whether they're at the base or at the top. And to do that, we're going to need to get their position. And we're going to need the Y from that. So we change the vector 3, you know, the X, Y, Z, and just pick out the Y value. Okay, let's move that across a bit, so we've got a bit more space. Uh, and actually, to do that, if you select a node and you uh, hit the sort of um, uh, the comma, not comma, well, it is the comma, but it's the little symbol above, which sort of looks like a little left symbol on the keyboard, then you can it will select everything to the left of that. And similarly, the full stop one will do to the right. And there's nothing connected on the right of that. But if I did that one and press full stop, it will connect all. It will select all of those, which is quite handy for moving stuff around. Um, so this y value, now if I plug that into the degrees directly, it's going to, you see there it twisted a little bit. Let me show this on, not on wireframe, but on smooth shade. We've got a little bit of a twist on it. Um, but it's a tiny amount because it's only twisting the, a literal value that's coming out of this y. So the ones at the top are going to twist two degrees and the one at the base are going to twist minus two degrees because they're two of the, you know, in the, they're two in the y axis and minus two at the bottom. So what we want to do is change this range here. So instead of like two and minus two, we want to say, um, well, let's get a change range node. Plug that into there, that value and that one out. And if I go to the controls for this, which are if you follow the cursor along to here, let's see, minus two to two, and that's the from. So for these are values both from, like from minus two start and end is at two. We can say that when it's at minus two, these ones at the bottom, we're going to rotate zero degrees. And at the top, the ones that are at two, they're going to rotate 360 degrees. And you'll see there, what happens is you get a twisting effect. So what we can do is plug this degrees back into the two end one, there, two end, which is controlling the 360. And we've got this thing animated in the scene. so. If we do that and plug that in, remember that's this value here, which is at zero here. But then as we go through, it twists 360 degrees. So that shows another simple deformer. Um, I'm not trying to sort of, you know, this isn't about me trying to say, isn't this a great deformer or anything like that. It's just, you know, trying to demonstrate how this stuff works. So just to recap, we've got, you know, an object here of which the bottom point positions are at minus two on the Y and two on the top, which is the value we're getting here, the Y going to here, minus two at the bottom to two on the top, minus two to two. We're converting that, we're changing the range of that from these from ones, then to the output, the two, is going from zero to whatever's coming in here. We did have it at 360, but now we've plugged in a value here, which is an animated value from the scene. Um, the result is changing from degrees into what the quaternion takes, which is radians. The um, axis and angle is giving us an axis on the y to do it and then it's rotating those vectors around and it's setting the point positions 
If I change the axis to a different one, let's see, I don't know, it's, it's probably look weird, but let's try it on the Z, uh, Z axis and see what happens when it rotates around there. Okay, you know, it's a weird effect. Um, it makes sense, uh, but I'm not going to go into it because it looks a bit <laughs> looks a bit confusing. But basically, those those vectors are. You can see that at the base they're not doing anything. You know, the ones right down at the bottom aren't doing anything. The ones in the middle are rotating around themselves. In other words, the the sort of axis of the rotation seems to be at zero, which makes complete sense because that's where all of these, you know. Are drawn from the origin and remember I've just shifted this over to the right but effectively it's like there but I've just done that as a you know so everything is rotating around the origin um, yeah anyway the, the other ones are a lot more useful to look at or a lot more clear if I do it from the Y this is a, which is why I chose that I'm slightly regretting going on to choosing that other one so yeah so that's another, you know, um, just I wanted to show some more nodes and show, you know, other stuff you can do with these vectors. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it there. Hopefully that's uh, still clear-ish. <laughs> All right, cheers, bye-bye.